Praise the Lord, good morning. Greetings in the mighty name of Jesus. It is a joy and a great privilege to be here once more this morning. Praise God. I trust everyone is in good health and happiness regardless of the situation or world. Praise God. I encourage you to keep safe. Those of you who are watching on Facebook online this morning, God bless you. On WhatsApp, YouTube, Facebook Messenger, uh, wherever you're watching from this morning, God bless you richly. All my family members, relatives, friends, Brethren from Eccles Church, brethren across the world, my relatives from Italy, Canada, America, uh, the Caribbean, Dubai, praise the Lord, uh, Guyana, all around the world. God bless you richly. It's really a joy and a privilege to be here once more this morning to minister the word of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I praise, I praise the Lord. Before I get into the word of God this morning, praise God. Uh, let's uh, praise God, hallelujah. As I always say, the, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ says, He says, Lo, I am with you always. I will never leave you nor forsake you even unto the end of the world. And that's a great assurance for me this morning. And I'm sure that's a great assurance for you this morning. Regardless of what uh, God promised me, He's going to be with me. And for, I know this morning, God, the Holy Spirit, is here with me. Praise God. And he also he said these words, healing is the children's bread. <clears throat> and the first covenant he made with man was the covenant of healing. Hallelujah. He, for he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. His chast the chastisement of our peace was upon him and with his stripes. We are healed this morning. I am healed. You are healed. We are healed this morning. Is that wonderful? Is that comforting to know that our God is a healer? He says, no plague shall come like that dwelling. Hallelujah. He says, a thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but no evil shall befall thee. Praise God. For the blood of Jesus, my friends, is so efficacious. The blood of Jesus is so powerful. The blood of Jesus is repellent. It destroys every yoke, and every bondage, and every fetter, and every evil, and every walk of darkness. Every spirit of witchcraft, obia, demonic forces, evil, I command to go in the name of Jesus. I destroy any walk of darkness by the blood of Jesus. Because the blood of Jesus is powerful this morning. Hallelujah. Praise God. I break every chain against your life. And every evil force of darkness against your life. And I set my people free this morning. In Jesus' precious and gracious wonderful name. I build a hedge around my life. And I build a hedge around God's people this morning. Praise God. Let me pray this morning. Hallelujah. Father God, I give you praise. I give you glory, I give you honor, I give you thanks. I thank you, Lord God, for many years ago, I received the flame of fire on my head, the anointing of the Holy Spirit, like it was on the days of Pentecost. I pray, God, this morning, you straight wrap me with the anointing of the Holy Spirit, O oh God. I pray, God, you dip me in the river of liquid fire of the Holy Spirit. And on my lips, and on my tongue, and on my voice, as I minister your words, your words will go forth on the anointing and power of the Holy Spirit. And many will be healed, many will be saved, many will be blessed, many will be delivered, many will come to know thee as Lord God and Savior. And many will be encouraged this morning. I ask in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I pray God, I know you bless me and bless your words. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Yesterday is Sunday. I keep in line with the Word of God. I preach on hungry for guidance. I preach on hungry for mercy, hungry, hungry for, for freedom, praise God, and different, different stuff. Praise God. But I want to speak hungry for help. I want to preach on this morning hungry for justice. Hungry for justice. My text is taken from Isaiah 58 verse 6. Isaiah 58 verse 6. It's, it's not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice. It's not this the kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice. Hallelujah. Praise God. Does God ever hate church? What a question. Is God ever discussed by a worship service? Does God ever discuss, uh, uh, dislike an offering? Does God ever applaud his ears when people pray and sing? Does God ever shut his eyes when people fast and perform rituals? The answer is yes. A loud, angry yes. 
You might say, Pastor, what have you seen this morning? I have never heard that before. The answer is yes. A loud, angry yes. Listen to some of the things God says in the Bible. I hate, I despise your religious feast. I cannot stand your assemblies. Amos 5.21 Stop being meaningless. Stop bringing meaningless offerings to me. Stop bringing meaningless offerings. Your incense is uh, distasteful to me. I cannot bear your evil. I cannot bear your evil assemblies. Your appointed feasts uh, my soul hates. They have become a burden to me. I am weary of bearing them. When you spread out your hands in prayer, I will hide my eyes from you. Lord, I thank you for your grace and love this morning in Jesus' name. If you, if you offer many prayers, I will not listen. Lord, please listen to us this morning. Isaiah 1, 13 to 15. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice to be heard on high. Isaiah 58, verse 4. Although they fast, although they fast, I will not listen to their cry. Instead, I will destroy them. He said this prophet is serious this morning. Jeremiah chapter 14, verse 12. Jeremiah was a prophet. And he was a very serious prophet. Oh, that one of you will shut the temple doors. I am not pleased with you. I am not pleased with you, says the Lord Almighty. And I will, I will accept no offering from your hands. Malachi 2.10 No doubt about it. Sometimes God hates religion. I said sometimes God hates religion. Church can anger him so much. Church can anger him so much that he, he wants to close it down. He wants to close it down. You know, when the COVID-19 started in uh, last year, and, and in fact, uh, 2019 December, I had a dream. And then the dream, the Lord showed me. He says, I have fired 80% of the pastors all across the world. And I said, what? And I wake up and I told my wife, and my wife said, you're crazy. Go back and sleep. You're crazy. But God was telling me something is coming. He fired 80% of the pastors all across the world in the churches. He says he's so angry he wants to close it down. And indeed, he had the coronavirus came and the church was closed down. I had a dream before and my wife was right there videoing the service and she can conform to that. I'm not telling lies on the prophet. They are the prayers he can't stand hearing. So many is he can't stand watching. Seasons of fasting that make him sick. Sick. Some pastors, all they care about, they take the preaching as a job. All they want is the cash, the money. They don't care about the people, they don't care about nothing. All they want is a lump sum. That's all they want. Hallelujah. Cyrus said that this morning. They don't care a damn about the people. Sorry to use such a word. Hallelujah. They just care that they bring all the money to the church and they're fat and happy. Praise God. But he says he had fired 80% and the 100 be is coming and 90% will be fired. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Man has took the preaching of God's word as a business. Man has took the, the preaching of the word of God as business. In North America, many have big planes value 100 million US. 60 million US, 90 million, big, big mansions, all the church money, and many people are going poor and hungry in Africa and all across the world. People are starving to death, and these preachers have the biggest plane, 10, 12 in limousine, and big mansion, and uh, what do you call it, cruise boats, cruise ship, and all sorts of things. Hallelujah. Everybody has to stand before God. This gospel in preaching is not for money. We must preach to get so saved and we must spread the money out and build on the churches and spread the word of God. Use the money not for yourself. Hallelujah. Praise God. The apostle Paul was an apostle. But the apostle Paul did not take money from the church. The apostle Paul was a tent maker. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you Jesus. Thank God I've never taken a cent from church. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Many years ago, what, 20 years ago, when I was pastoring for those assemblies of God Church, I had the money in the drawer. Little change. And then you have problem with light bill, phone bill, and you have problems, I take out a couple dollars and give them, and that's the money use. I had my own business. I work and sweat with my own hands to get money, or money, to maintain my family. I do not like to take church money. Hallelujah. Praise God. Sorry for saying that. Praise God. But remember, some ministers depend only on that. So you have to, 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 to make sure they're paid. Because you cannot muzzle ox that tread the corn. But don't tell me about buying luxury jets, luxury plane, and big mansion, and the people go hungry. Praise God. Hallelujah. Don't get a profit from this one. Hallelujah. He cannot stand watching. Season of fasting that makes him sick. We have come out of a season of fasting and it makes him sick. He said to tell the churches, it, it's fasting has made him sick. Because the virus is still in the world and many more plagues are coming. Because it's just a show. It's a show business. Hollywood and Bollywood. Show business. God hates religion without reality. Ritual without relationship. So many without sincerity. God hates personal pity without social justice. He hates all religion that it is centered, it's that is centered on self. All religion that is centered on self. Without love for God and without love for other people. Without love for other people. He hates religion. Where people try to act like angels. Angels during special religious moments, but act more like a devil the rest of the time. I know many. Praise God. Fail fasting. Hope we have all the fail fasting. I think we have many fail fasting for the Easter season, the resurrection period. God said to tell the churches, your fasting has failed. I do not know what. The motive is wrong. People need to be taught properly. People need to be teach. The word of God. You can holler and bawl and scream and holler and have all the shows in the church. But without the knowledge of God, you're nothing. We must have the word of God in us. Jesus was filled with the word. With the word, the word, the word. He had a showdown with Satan. He had to use the word. Many Pentecostal Christians are very shallow. Sorry to say that. Pentecostal Christians are shallow, shallow, shallow. They're dumb, deaf, and dumb, deaf, and shallow, and dunce with the word of where the word of God is concerned. Hallelujah. The word of God has not been teached to them properly. Hallelujah. Praise God. A Sunday morning you go, and all you're getting is a half required hour message, and during the week nobody goes to church. So they're hollow, people don't even read the Bibles. So the church is just hollow, empty, and shallow. Hallelujah. Fail fasting. When you fast, they don't know what they're fasting for. They have no knowledge of what they're fasting for. Hallelujah. Sorry to be hurt so hard this morning. This prophet is serious. This message this morning. I finish. This message this morning is in a series of articles on fasting. This Bible, the Bible encourages fasting. And this series, hallelujah, has had, had, had highlighted various situations when it fits, when it's fitting to fast. Fasting can be valuable, but we must fast in a way that draws us closer to God and closer to other people. It's not a way that disgusts God and drives us farther away from people. No. Too much of self. Me, myself, and I. Self-centeredness. Me, everything is for me, myself, and I. I will help nobody else. That's my position. That's my ministry. That's my calling. And forget about everybody else. Hallelujah. Me, myself, and I. God drives us far away from people. That's what I'm saying. It disgusts God. Few things are more disgusting to God or more damaging to people than disregard of justice. God says, I, the Lord, love justice. I, the Lord, love justice. Isaiah, Isaiah, my friends, 61 verse 8. We, if we do not hungry for justice, then we are not really hungry for God. If we are hungry for God, we are also hungry for justice. Or fairness. 
or for the goodness of others. There is no fairness or goodness for others, for treating them right and defending their rights. Nobody is defending anybody's rights these days. Me, myself, and I. That's all people are concerned with. In Zechariah 7, the Bible tells of some people who have been fasting and have a question for God. They are, God answered the question with a question. Was it really for me that you fasted? I ask this question. Was it really for God you fasted? 7 verse 5. God says that their religious activities is too self-centered. They're thinking more about themselves than about God's will or, or the welfare of other people. God tells them, administer true justice. Show mercy and compassion to one another. Do not oppress the widow or the fatherless. The aliens or the poor. Hallelujah. Praise God. Do not oppress the widows or the fatherless, the aliens or the poor. In your hearts, in your hearts, do not take evil of each other. When these people pluck their ears and harden their hearts to God's just call for justice, how does the Lord respond? When I call, they did not listen. So when they call, I will not listen. Is that fear? Says the Lord Almighty, Zechariah 7 verse 9 and 13. Isaiah 58 records a similar conversation of God with people who have been fasting but feel, my friends, frustrated. They seem eager to know and want him to choose, to be chosen of them. They have been fasting to get God's attention and help. Note carefully, I'm using the word of God. But it has, it hasn't worked. I said it has work. God seems as far away as ever and they are and they are having more problems than blessings. They complain to God, why have we fasted and you have not seen it? They have, why have we humbled ourselves and you have not noticed? Isaiah chapter 50 verse 3. They are fed up with fasting, but God is even more fed up than they are. God is more fed up than you are with fasting. God answers the complaint with a complaint of his own. On the day of your fasting, you do as you please and exploit all your workers. Your fasting ends in quarreling and strife and in, stri and, and in striking each other with wicked fists. You cannot fast as you do today and expect your voice, your voice to be heard on high. Is this kind of fast I have chosen? Only a day for a man to humble himself. Is that what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord. Is not this kind of fasting I have chosen to loose the chains of injustice and set the oppressed free? It is not to share your food with the hungry and to provide the, the poor, the poor with wonder, with shelter. When you see the naked to clothe him and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood. It's possible to fast with a look at me. Attitude, look at me, God. See what I'm doing. Are you impressed? Then hurry up and do what I want. This look at me. Attitude can be, be directed at other people. Look at me. Everybody, look at me. I am religious. I fast and I'm conscious and serious. Aren't you impressed? The point of fasting is not to impress God or other people. The point is to be drawn closer to God and to other people by learning to love God and others more than we love getting on our own way. People don't even know what is love. When you talk about love, preacher, somebody told me on Facebook Messenger. The preacher, you get preaching the word, but you talk to him about love. People don't understand love, that God is love. This prophet, the spirit of God flows through me. All I can speak about love, because the love of God is in me. There is different kind of love. Agape love, filio, 
I, I kind of remember Eros and Storch. Storch, praise God. Four kind of love. I'm getting old. Praise God. Hallelujah. If fasting just makes you grumpier, if we, if we backbite and fight more than ever, God is not impressed. God is not impressed. If we choose to go hungry for a little while, but don't care about people who are hungry and man, man, man nourished, should, there is no choice of their own. They are fasting offense God. If we exploit employees by overlooking and underpaying them, it's no wonder God doesn't send us blessings in response to our fasting. If we know the plight of jobless people and refugees, we should not, we should not be shocked when God ignores us. I'll stop here. I remember something my wife told me. Many years ago, my wife was working in the comms office. And her accountant told her, he says he don't like church. And he's not going to church. She asked him why. He says when they were small boys, he and his brother used to wash bottles and sell them. And when they wash the bottle, a little change again, they buy one ice cream or cone. One ice cream cone and split it in half and share it. And he says, one day he was standing on the road to wait to buy his cone. And the pastor pulled up and buy two each for his children and some fudgical and some big thin ice cream and went in his car and drive away. And he says, what? He says, look at that. A man mother told me to save our money and throw the church. And the pastor see me at the corner. He didn't buy one for me. He buy two for each children, a, a big bag to carry with fossil and a popsicle and a big half gallon ice cream. And me and my brother just have to wash bottles and buy half a split in half. God doesn't want it that way. People are looking. Sorry to say that. If we, and when she told me that, I said, I will never take money from church. Praise God. I never, I work hard. With these two hands, I said, I will never take church money in the name of Jesus. We, if we turn away even from our own flesh and blood, if we leave our family and relatives on their own, if we deprive our children of the time and love they need, if we abandon age parents and institutions, and uninterrupted loneliness. And we can't expect God to be our consistent companion. If we if we are we are a curse to others, we can't expect blessing for ourselves. We can't expect blessings for ourselves. Christmas comes once a year, every man must have this year. When Christmas time comes, don't tell people of them, let them enjoy themselves. Fruitful fasting. Fasting should not aim to change God, but to change us. The main goal of fasting is to bring us closer to God and more in tune with Jesus. Hallelujah. Are you hearing my friends this morning? Hallelujah. What does it mean to be in tune with Jesus? One thing it means is to be in tune with his priorities. In Jesus' first public speech, he declared, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to preach good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom to, for the prisoners and recovery of sight toward the blind. Hallelujah. To release, to release the oppressor, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Luke 4, 18 and 19. Hallelujah. If we are in tune with Jesus, my friends, we will want to be good news for poor people. Good news for people with disabilities. Good news for oppressed and imprisoned people. The main purpose, <coughs> excuse me, I got put in the rain, holy year, praise God. The main purpose of fasting is to get closer to God. The main purpose of fasting is to get closer to God. And when, when, that, when that happens, it will create in us a hunger for justice that matches God's love of justice. Let me take some water, please. Hallelujah. When it is hard, you have to feel. God says, God says, you must obey the health laws. And if you obey the health laws, I will heal you. You can't walk in the sun. And when the rain comes down next half, you will walk in the rain. When you catch a cold, you cannot blame God for it. Amen? 
Praise God. And if you don't obey the health laws, God says if we obey the health laws and do what He says, you'll be healthy all the days of your life. But you have to do your part. <clears throat> Fasting should move us to stand for those who can't stand up for themselves. This will mean standing up for people who don't have much money or political influence. It may mean standing up for helpless babies who are target for abortion. Standing up for tiny humans who are subject to embroiled research. Working and pray, pray, praying that God will change attitudes and laws so that smallest may be protected from it. Fasting must not selfishly seek to change God and bring Him in line with our wishes. Fasting must force aim to change us and bring us in line with God's wishes. And then aim for God to change an unjust world to be more in line, to be more in line with His justice. Are you hearing me? Is it too deep for you this morning? Fasting must look beyond the, the personal relationships between us and God and consider our relationship to other people. Instead of just fasting and praying for God to bless us, let's fast and pray for the poor and oppressed. Fast and pray that God will change their situation and that He will change us who have ignored or perhaps even help cause the plight. God injects something. He says many churches, Christmas time, they give out a little gifts to the poor. Old age time, they give out a little party, and it's, but the rest of the year they go hungry. Isn't that so? Isn't that so? Hallelujah. God will change the situation and He will change us who have ignored or perhaps will help us cause their plight. What is the plight this morning? Hallelujah. Ironically, I says, ironically, the more many fast, fasting centers, centers on me, the less good it does, does me. But if I focus less on myself and more on God and on people in, the, in need, I will be blessed. When we seek for God's kingdom and His righteousness, His justice, He takes care of everything else. Matthew 6, 33. When we hunger for justice and work for the good of those in need, God promised in Isaiah 58. What God tells in Isaiah 58, when your light it will, it will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear, then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of God will, will be your rear guard. Then, will, then you will call, and the Lord will answer. You will cry for help and he will say, Here I am. Here I am. If you spend, if you spend yourself on if you spend yourself on behalf of the hungry and satisfy the need of the oppressed, and satisfy the need of the oppressor, then your light will arise in the darkness, and your light will become like the noonday. The Lord will guide you always. He will satisfy your needs. You will be like a well water garden. 15 verse 811. I just remember something. Well, I have a, my eldest son is in Barbados. And he told me not too long ago that in Barbados, his car is full of dust. The volcano dust is all over the place. The airport is closed down. And the whole place, the sky is dark. And he had to close down his office and send on the staff. Praise God. The place is very dark and the dust is flying all over. I told him, son, stay inside, close all the windows. Hallelujah. Praise God. Let's remember St. Vincent in prayers. Let's remember the Prime Minister in prayer, Ralph Gonzalez, that God will give him wisdom, knowledge, and guidance. And all the people who have been in different places, I think Barbados, Ghana, 2000, St. Lucia, nearby countries in Ghana, taking some, and so on. People in, in trouble. And we do not know how long that volcano will last. It might be days, it might be weeks, it might be months. But let's remember the people in St. Vincent in prayer. Amen? Praise God. Let me get back to the word. If you want God's light all around you, if you want His blessing showering from you from above, you and, and bubbling up like a spring within you, we all want that to be bubbling up like a spring within us. Isn't that so? 
Hallelujah. Then seek for the things to be made right, not just for yourself, but for others who need justice. Who need justice? You are not a secret agent, but you must have a secret weapon. When my, when, when my children were small, they check in my briefcase and find a card, private investigator. And he said, that your private? I said, no, 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 no. I was about to, but I have a card. Praise God. Secret weapon. Secret weapon. It's clear that fasting and justice are connected. It is clear, my friends, that fasting and justice are connected. It's bad to pursue fasting without any concern for justice. But it's also make a mistake uh, to, to pursue justice. Without fasting, the fast, uh, to fast without any hunger for justice is to be hypocritical. Did you hear me? I said to fast without any hunger for justice is to be hypocritical. There's so much hypocrites in the churches today. Sorry to say that. As a man of God, I'm not supposed to say it. But what the word of God says. To fast without any hunger for justice is to be hypocritical. But to seek justice without fasting is to be ill-equipped. Fasting can be a secret weapon in the war against injustice. If you really love justice and want to fight for it, don't neglect one of your key weapons. Don't neglect fasting. Church people can, can form social justice communities. And concerned citizens can form political action committees. We can raise money to help the poor and oppressed. We can march for the right of life to un of unborn babies. We can try to elect leaders who will uphold justice. And those things are good. But when is it the last time you fast for justice? When is the last time anyone fasts for justice? God ignores phony fasting. But that doesn't mean we should fast. It means we should fast rightly. Rightly. When you fast for justice, your own hunger reminds you of the desperate hunger of people in need. You feel just a tiny sample of what they feel. And you, are, and you care more about them. As you identify with people in need, your physical hunger also expresses your spiritual hunger for God and for His justice to reign. Hallelujah. Don't neglect this. Secret weapon. Don't neglect the secret weapon. As you work and pray for justice, make fasting part of your arsenal against evil. Hallelujah. Against evil. Some champions of justice describe themselves as speaking truth to power. Sometimes that can be a, a, a pompous slogan of political activists who like to complain about any uh, policies that doesn't suit them. But let's just suppose that it's a, a accurately describable, describes uh, what some people are doing. Hallelujah. They really are speaking truth to power. What is still not, not enough? Things will never change simply by speaking truth to power. When power has gone bad, it makes more than truth to change it. Hallelujah. It takes more than truth to change it. It takes power to change power. Did you get that? Write it down. It takes power to change power. And fasting is the one way to call on the power of Almighty God. Call on Almighty God against injustice, powers, and policies. Hallelujah. For example, every abortion kills an individual human. This truth is becoming harder and harder to deny. Even most abortion activists, <laughs> activists have given up speaking of an unborn baby as a mass of tissue, or the, the contents of the uterus, or the results of conception. They have lost the argument about whether abortion destroyed a human life. The, moral, the more on, on, on some images we see, my friends, the more specific information we have about heartbeats, brain function, or and a baby sucking its tongue in the womb. The harder it becomes to deny that abortion destroys a real baby. Most people now accept this as truth. But 
the fact alone do not change behavior. Many who grant, uh, who grant that abortion destroys a human baby still want abortion to be legal. They accept the truth of abortion. As killing babies, they still won't protect the babies. That can explain this, this, what can explain this concept? Concept bondage to spiritual forces of evil. If we truly long for justice, my friends, we must do more than speak truth to power and prove the nature of injustice. We must also seek God's power to defeat the wicked prince of unjust power, that is, Satan himself, Lucifer. We must seek, we must seek for God to make people in power more just or else to remove them from power altogether. Anybody who goes for that must be removed from power. We must never vote them in power. Jesus teaches us to pray. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Matthew 6, 10. That is a prayer for justice. For everything to be set right. When we pray for that and work towards that, we also fast for that. Fasting adds urgency to our prayers for justice. My friends, and adds effectiveness to our efforts on behalf of justice. Hallelujah. Hungry for his coming. We are living in the last days. Yesterday I told you that the Antichrist is in the wings, ready to be uh, introduced by the Pope and take his rightful place. We must hunger for his coming. Jesus Christ says, I go to prepare a place today. And I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there will be me also. Very soon, the trumpet of the Lord will sound, and the dead in Christ shall rise, and those who are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the Lord God in the air. Because we are about to go into the seven-year tribulation period. And the book of Revelation chapter 13, prophecy will be fulfilled. The mark of the beast, 666, will be implanted very soon. It's like a grain of rice, which I mentioned before. I don't want to go back there. Hungry for his coming. Ultimately, if we truly hunger for justice, we hunger for nothing less than the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Only when Jesus comes, only when Jesus comes again, will all injustice be judged. All wrongs will be righted. All God's poor be made rich. All the oppressor be liberated. All dis disabilities be healed. All tears wiped away. All Satan forces be banished to hell. And all the fallings that linger even in God's people be removed by our character and be made perfect. That brings us back to where we started. The series of fasting. True fasting is all its True fasting in all its, uh, its forms and on all occasions is all, it's, it's at the deepest level of hunger for God. My friends, we've seen in the past message that fasting is not a, a scheduled pattern to own God's approval. But it's first of all simply a way to pursue closer fellowship with God and show our desires for Him. Any regular pattern of fasting should have this as its main aim this morning. In addition to fasting, for fuller, my friends, this morning, fuller fellowship with the Lord. The Bible shows occasions when it's fitting to fast for a particular goal. When we sin and are hungry for God's mercy and forgiveness, when we are hooked on old habits and are trained for more God-given freedom and self-control, when we are faced, when we face huge challenges and are hungry for God's help, when we are assured of what, of what our next, when we, we, we are unsure of what our next step uh, should be and are hungry for God's guidance. I pray and I speak and I minister yesterday, I preach on God's guidance. And when we see the plain and injustice songs, us are hungry for God's justice. 
all those hungers for mercy, for freedom. I preach on hungry for mercy, hungry for freedom, hungry for help, hungry for guidance. Now I'm preaching on hungry for justice. As well as a hunger for the Lord himself will be satisfied when Jesus comes again and you will see him face to face. Hallelujah. Praise God. When Jesus walked on this earth, his disciples did not fast. When the Lord was asked why his followers did not fast, the way other religious people fasted, Jesus answered, How can the guests of the bride chamber mourn while he is with them? The time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and, they, and then they will fast, according to Matthew 9 15. I am calling him, in calling himself the bridegroom. Jesus was calling himself the Lord God. The prophet Isaiah has written, Your Mika is your husband. The Lord Almighty is his name. As a bridegroom rejoice over his bride, so God will rejoice over you. Isaiah 54 verse 5 and in Isaiah 62 verse 5. My friends, a bride doesn't fast for her wedding day. When she is with the, oh my friends, when she, she is with the bridegroom. But if her husband leaves and is away for a long time, she misses him. When our Lord was on earth, it was time to it was time to feast with him, not to fast. But now that he has gone away to heaven, fasting is fitting. When Jesus left, he doesn't he, he, he sent his Holy Spirit. I says when Jesus left, he sent his Holy Spirit to be with us. Holy Spirit to be with us. The Spirit is a tremendous blessing and links us to the Savior. But what, but what Christians experience, what Christian experience of the Spirit now is just a down payment. That is why I think it was yesterday the day before. I mentioned the pastors and the bishops and the leaders must check in the church and see all those who are filled with the Spirit. If you're not filled with the Spirit, take it from the man of God, you're not going to heaven. Because mortal should put on immortality and you'll be caught up. You have to have the Spirit of God in you to be transformed. Transformed in a twinkling of eye to be changed. But if the spirit is in the spirit is inside of you, best rest assured, you are left right here on earth. That is why it's important to be filled. The church leaders make sure your members and followers are filled with the Holy Spirit. Because they will not make it in a rapture if they're not filled with the Holy Spirit. They will left right here because the body will not be quickened when the trumpet sound. Did you get that? Praise God. Hallelujah. The spirit now is a down payment, a deposit. Ephesians 1.14 on what we will experience when Jesus comes again. Note sometimes when the Holy Spirit gives me, give me something direct, I have to stop and inject it. And when we see him face to face, and God is in all, God is all in all. Though this, through the Spirit we taste of Jesus, but we also miss him and long for him. Jesus says that when the bridegroom was taken away, his followers would fast. Hallelujah. Do you fast? Do you fast? Many have excuses in fasting. Do you hungry and pray for him to come again? Are you hunger and you, do you hunger for him to come again? We must have the new wine skin. The new wine skin is very important. Our fasting for Jesus to come again is different from the Old Testament believers fasting and hunger for God. Jesus compared fasting in, in, in the old era of old wines or old wine and fasting in a new era to new wine which could require new wine skin. Matthew 9 verse 16 and 17. Fasting for Jesus' coming and perfect justice is different than it is to be used. It that is to, to be that, that, that it used to be. God tell me to tell you something. Many people are not watching my message. But I want to tell you, this is not by the school level. This is doctorate level. So don't let nobody fool you not to look at my message. Because what you're getting here is doctorate level. 
Is that clear? Praise God. Fasting for Jesus' coming and for justice is different than it used to be. Things have changed. Black back then, people of faith longed for what they did, didn't have. Now we long for more than of what we do have. We have Jesus and we want more of him. We want more of him. Back then, Jesus had. Jesus had not come. Now Jesus had come. We know him as he is and we want him to come again. Jesus has already revealed God's grace. God's grace has already paid the price for sin and broken Satan's grip on humanity. Hallelujah. Has already set in motion the powers of the age to come. Pastor John Piper exclaimed. He exclaimed. What's new about the fasting is that it, it rests on all his finished work of the Bible. Hallelujah. The yearning that we feel for revival or awakening or deliverance from corruption is not merely longing and aching. The first fruits of what we long for have already come. The down payment of what we yearn for is already paid. The fullness that we are longing for and fasting for has appeared in history and we have be beheld his glory. It is not merely future. My friends, we have tested the powers of age to come. And our new fasting is not because we are hungry for something we have not tasted. But because the new wine is of Christ's presence is so real and so satisfying. The newness of our fasting is this. Its intensity comes not because we have never tasted the wine of Christ's presence, but because we have tasted it so, we have tasted it so wonderful by the Spirit and cannot now be satisfied until the consummation of joy arrives. We must all, we, we must all, we must have all He promised. And as much as as possible. My friends, we fast to have a much of Jesus and his justice as he will give us now. And we fast and pray for him to hasten his second coming. We fast and pray for Jesus to hasten his second coming because the world is heading for destruction. So that we will experience him fully, fully and enjoy a world where God will, will is done perfectly or not. As it is in heaven. Fasting is a physical expression of heart hunger for the second coming of Jesus, John Piper. Before Jesus' first coming, people longed for the promised Savior to come and to set things right. An old widow named Anna, well over 80 years old, was a prophetess and had and had a special longing for the Messiah. The Bible says that she worshipped day and night, fasting and praying at, at, that, at God temple in Jerusalem. After Jesus was born, his mother Mary and Joseph brought the baby to the temple. And there Anna saw the one she had been fasting and praying for for all those years. She gave thanks to God and spoke about the child of all who were, who were, looking, who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Luke chapter 2, verse 37 38. My friends, if Hannah was so eager for the coming of a Savior, she hardly knew. Shouldn't we be even more eager for Him to come again? We know more fully, fully who Jesus is and what He can do. Hannah made Jesus only as a baby, but we have seen His glory. The glory of his miracles and teachings. My friends, the glory of his death and resurrection. Hallelujah. The glory of salvation, the inner working of the Holy Spirit. If we have truly tasted any of this, we, how can we not hunger for more? The bridegroom has gone away. So let us fast and pray for him to come back. So that the, so that the taste we have of him may be a feast. 
so that the, the partial knowledge we have of him, my friends, that we have of him, my friends, may become full. And so that our experience of his love may be complete. My friends, do you fast and pray? Come, Lord Jesus, Revelation 22, verse 20. Or are you content with business as usual? Are you content with business as usual? There is no business as usual in this world right now. And there will, no be, be, will be no business as usual in this world until, until from now, until Jesus comes. Do you hear the man of God? Maybe your life seems to be going fine at the moment. The injustice that hurts. Praise God. Yes, do you fast and pray? Come, Lord Jesus, Revelation 22, verse 20. Or are you content with business as usual? I said, beloved, before, this world, business is, is not business as usual anymore. And it will never be business as usual until Jesus comes. Because one plague after another will come. We are living in the last days. And we are heading towards the tribulation period. The seven years tribulation period. Thus said the man of God. Maybe you, maybe your life seems to be going fine at the moment. Very few. The injustice that hurts others don't really bother you. And as long as it's, it's other people that are suffering and not, and not you, you're not concerned. When you're concerned with the cash, my wife John might take my finger. If that's your attitude, you are a, in a deadly pearl. If you are not longing for Jesus to return, you will not be ready for him when he returns. You will be af so afraid of him, of facing him, that you will call on the mountains to fall on you and hide you from him. But if you know Jesus and long for his justice, you will pray without ceasing. Lord, come, Lord Jesus. Jesus says, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for God to make them right and make all things right. For they will be filled, Matthew 5 or 6. Hungry for justice is hungry for Jesus. And that hunger will be fully satisfied. As only when Jesus returns, my friends. My friends, when we say the Lord's Prayer and ask for God's kingdom to come, we are really praying for the King to come. To those who long for Jesus and His justice, for the King and His kingdom, the Bible promises, your eyes will see the King in His beauty. And view a land that stretches afar. On unjust officials. Unfair tax gatherers. Brutal police and soldiers. And cruel farm invaders. Will be only distant memories. The new Jerusalem. And all God's order. All God's order. Will enjoy peace and prosperity. And all will be truly right in the world. For the Lord is our judge. The Lord is our lawgiver. The Lord is our king. Who is, who will save us. Hallelujah. Praise God. Isaiah 33 verse 17 and 22. Praise the Lord. My friends and beloved in the Lord. Hungry for justice was the message. I trust the Lord. It has been a blessing to your heart. And you do enjoy the word of God. I do love you with the everlasting love of God. I love you very much. And my only goal and aim is that you make it in the rapture. For the coming of the Lord is very near. Be a just person. Hungry for justice. And God's justice will come upon you. Praise God for the coming of the Lord is very near. God bless you richly. Do have a wonderful day. Hallelujah. I'll see you tomorrow. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God.